welcome to Grown Man Record Excited Night. It is so GD, uh, glad, Ursan, forever for, to be back. You know, I thought it was going to be really hot. It's actually kind of chilly in here. It's a, it was a little chilled off. I got, got an old on. AC got, unit over here, and I had to... You ran an ice bucket machine? Well, I aimed to cover this up before we started doing this internet program, but I left it open, and it looked all janky, but I was trying to cover my ass there. Then I realized if I kept jerking on this end right here, my icy cup's going to come tumbling down, and the whole damn show's just going to look stupid. So I decided I'm going to leave it. We're going to leave it, Steve. We're going to leave it where it's at up here. There's people, uh, there's people outside watching this. Probably, but I, I like the double curtain, solid look in the back. Uh, it gives a, a sense of perception, or a lack of perception, if you will, uh, that um, I don't think we, we normally would have. But that's okay, I'm gonna let that go tonight. I'm glad okay. to be back after a week of being on call, and uh, I went uh, two weeks without drinking any party liquor. I've just broken that streak this evening. Um, we'll talk a little more about that later, but it's been a good time, and I'm glad to be back here on the program, uh, which is where the hell I'm supposed to be on a Friday night. It's where everybody's supposed to be on a Friday night. You can always check us out on the live stream on Ustream starting at 8.30. But it's still spring, but it's officially summer because school's out for most people now, right? School's out! Yeah, it's getting damn hot down here, too. Because we've got kids, they got to deal with, put places. Got to you got to tow up at grandma's house and drop them off. Leave them for a day. Go by the work factory. Come on back. Pick them up. Go home. Have you some supper. Have, have some, some beans. supper. I had some good I had Turkish. There's a Turkish restaurant in High Point. I ate there. Is there really? Oh, yeah. What kind of stuff do they serve up there? Uh, baba ganoush. What, what uh, is a lot that? Of, a lot of, um, uh, uh, skewer, what do you call it? A shish kebab. Shish kebab. That's a very Turkish thing. Yeah. With rice and like grilled vegetables. It was awesome. Really? Baba really? ganoush is, is like hummus, uh -huh. except it's made with eggplant. A lot of garlic? <laughs> uh, no, I think there's garlic in it, but yeah. it's like a lot of oil and eggplant and, you know. It's I've, I've become pretty adverse to garlic. Very, yeah. very Mediterranean. Close to Greek. There's Greek dishes Are there yogurty sauces involved? There are yogurty sauces involved. Cucumber yogurty sauces. Tzatziki type? Very tzatziki like. I would be interested in giving it a shot. They use a lot of they use Turkish? rather rather no than Turkish? rather than I cilantro. They use a lot of parsley. And to me, parsley has no flavor. Maybe I'm wrong. Um, uh, that's the worst ever. <laughs> but uh, yeah, but you're right. Parsley has no damn taste. And my, my mom told me that as a, as a little boy. I said, "What's all that stuff that the fancy people put around the edge of the plate?" And uh, it was parsley, it's just to make it look good. It ain't helps got you, no taste. Helps you poop. She's like, you, you scrape that off, you don't eat it. it. Ain't got no taste. But apparently, it helps you poop. Yeah. But, but that garnish you put on your plate. I can't have you barking have my wages after you have a good meal. Like it might be possible. I can't have my wages garnish you. Um, uh, yeah. Okay. You been busy? I've been I've been busy. It's been a it's been a rough time on it. Yeah, you you did something you did something pretty crazy, like stuff my something my dad would do. Oh yeah, yesterday now. What happened uh, to you? I had an accident in the shower area. In I was the shower. I was in my own restaurant room that I have here at the studio, and I was uh, I was going in to uh, bathe on it uh, for a, for the, the day okay. about it. And I lather went, you lathered up. Yeah. Well, I got in there. I was getting ready to lather up, and then I found myself uh, a one foot in it, <laughs> and uh, I, I I wrenched up to grab something or other, and it was uh, all I had to hold grab a hold of was a shower curtain. And so you pulled a, a psycho. I went through that. <laughs> I went right through the shower. Well, you curtain went through the curtain and um, landed on the floor. Real. Did you, was real it, were your first hard. words? Ta da! Uh, I should have. <laughs> I should have thought ahead. Um, yeah, but it was um, it was pretty bad. Oh, okay. I'm sore on it. You still sore? Yeah. It's uh, it's pretty bad. In fact, you came to work thinking you might have had a concussion. I've got a history of concussion. 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 
and I've got a history of cocoons too. Mm -hmm. I used to collect them when I was a kid until some of them, uh, some of them a smelled bad, and two, some of them hatched, and my mom got mad about both of those. Are you serious about the cocoons? Maybe. <laughs> um, it was a situation. I collected skulls. Yeah. <laughs> Like a raccoon skull. Oh, okay. Some of me had to get the brain matter out and stuff. Yeah. It was kind of weird. Hell, we didn't leave that shit to chance around yonder. Of course, bleach does a good job. Mmm. Does as it does what does with heroin syringes. People love to get sand dollars out of the ocean and just throw them in a bucket of bleach. Yeah. Like, wow, you're really <laughs> how genteel. Yeah, that's. Uh, They're gonna look good when they're all white. There's something in that process that's not right. You know, we like to do a good, uh, we like to do a good curb segment uh, on the program. We do. Uh, curbs has been a big, um, there's a lot of buzz about curbs. Curbs has been a big deal, and uh, I have to say, um, we've had a, a great selection of curbs that have been sent in. Our good buddy Spencer's always hooking us up. Uh, but but our, our good buddy from the Vinyl Show actually sent in a video of some stuff uh, all the way across the Yonder Coast. You know where old man uh, old man Kelsey's Woods is. Mm -hmm. and you know where old man Kelsey's Creek is. Yeah, it's further than that. Oh yeah, all the way to the other coast. All the way. Yeah, old man Kelsey's Ocean, all the way over there. And he had a curb. Uh, he went out on a little curb patrol, and he did a video. A curb patrol. Yeah, and he did a little video about it, and we're gonna watch it right now. We'll, we'll uh, stay oh, tuned here. You know, uh, stay tuned here on Grohman Record Night. We'll be right back. I'm looking for curbs That might sound absurd But I'm looking for curbs They all look the same. I don't want to sound like a curpus, but... And the first curb that we come in contact today with is a tow-away curb. Kind of curious what you guys think about this curb here. And that's curb number one. We have a curb that assists with drainage. It looks like this curb has received some sort of trauma. Just curious if this curb is repairable. And I'm assuming that you guys, you know, in the uh, curb world of curb professionals, you would consider this a decorative curb. These aren't curbs, but I figured they would be interesting nonetheless. So. Here's another yellow curb, and uh, we've seen a lot of these today. I don't see color when I see curbs. Your One thing I've learned is there is a lot of suffering in the curb world. A lot of broken curbs, man. Hey, what's going on everybody? And I am traveling far and wide looking for curbs. It's not as easy as one would think. You would think you would go out there, and there's just interesting curbs everywhere, but there's not. There's not interesting curbs everywhere. They're just pieces of concrete laid out. I don't know, there's a couple probably cool ones, but I'm doing my best grown man record night to find the ultimate, ultimate curb. Association with an image. Okay, how about that, dude? Wow. That's uh that's some hardcore dedication right there. 
We appreciate our Grow Man Record Night Street team and our homeboy from The Vinyl Show. If you've not checked out The Vinyl Show, go look it up. The best of like hardcore, punk, old school stuff. Man, it's, uh, he's got a great show. He really knows how to put it together. He's one of the uh, he's one of the one of the guys out there that really knows how to put a show together. Right, that's good stuff. I love the framing. Yeah, man, love the old TV shit. He's a good friend of the program. He and is. He turned me on some curbs I didn't really think about. I mean, Especially curbs like the, all the way across. The tollway curb. All the way across uh, the. You know, I don't see I don't see color. I see curbs. <laughs> yeah, that's classic. He's a classy guy, Steve. You know. Uh, you're a pretty classy guy. I, I, will, I want to do a little tease right now. We've not done a little uh, Mitchum commercial in a long time. I mean, yeah. I, I don't have that for this evening. You don't? I, no, I don't. But I want to uh, say uh, 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 series, Comedians in Cars Getting Coffee. I don't talk about it. Or you ain't got it. Don't talk about or it. Or even if you've never seen it. No, I'm going to tell them. Go this week. And watch the episode <laughs> with Julia Louis Dreyfus. Julia Louis Dreyfus. And then uh, come back and see us next week. Uh, Do they ever? So just you go back, watch watch that episode. Jerry Seinfeld, Julia Louis Dreyfus. I'm, I'm, it's on the Crackle Network. I'm gonna put. I'm putting together a little thing. Yeah. I haven't got it put together yet, but, okay. but I've been thinking about something and it's happened in my I, life. I, like things, I need Steve. to put it together and share because it's 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 important. So it's that, that that's a deep deep tease right there. Deep. We're talking like maybe a few episodes from now. It's an industry <laughs> term. It's an industry term. Um, so let's talk about what we played. What we played. You're about to clue me in because I wasn't here. I was out getting a What new, we played. Upgrading my phone. You was getting your Turkish on. What? I did the lamb shish kebab. Lamb? Oh, yeah. What'd that lamb do to you, Steve? That lamb got in my belly and made me happy. Man, you're a murderer. <laughs> little lamb, little lamb, who made thee? Were you asking me? <laughs> I'm, not, I'm not familiar with the bit. I don't know where to chime in. <laughs> I like to be. I like to be a part of it too, but I don't know that one. I, I'm gonna look it up. Has something to do with he? Did, did he who made the tiger make the or something? It's like Blake or, or. That sounds Muslim. No, it's not Muslim. That sounds Muslim. It does I mean, sound Muslim. Though. Tigers in there and whatnot. They got. You ever been to, you should have seen it. Tiger, desert. tiger, burning bright in the forest of the night. Whose immortal hand or eye you ever, made thy fearful symmetry? That didn't rhyme. <laughs> I've always thought that too. It's like, wow, you got so close, but fine. And then ruined it. He gave up on it. He gave up. That's why we win wars. I think this is, who am I? We don't give up. It might be William Butler Yates. Oh. Anyway, go ahead. Whatever you're talking it about. It sounds like T.S. Eliot because it's yeah. stupid. <laughs> <laughs> the wasteland. I wasted. Uh, there's a reason they call it the wasteland. Am I doing a literary joke? I think you are. That's not this kind of program, folks. <laughs> it's not this kind of program. Let's talk about. Uh, I'm gonna set you up. I'm gonna set you up every time for something yeah. more intellectual. Uh, I played this weather report album. I don't think did I we play this the last couple weeks. Yeah, you probably play it every week and don't know it. No, it's one I just picked up. Um, and it's a uh, 75 on CBS. This is Tailspinners. I think it was Dig of the Week from the last time we did a program, which has been a week or two. And um, it's pretty good, man. Very much in that kind of uh, Billy Cobham-ish kind what? of realm. You know what I mean? Where like, does this fall in the spectrum? Does Yako play on this? I, Let me see that cover. Let me see that cover. Oh, it's either his first or his last or his first without him. No, it's not his. That's later. 75, that's a little later. Ah. Cause I got some 72s and some 73s. Mm. You ever seen a 71? They're worth a million dollars if you can get one with a one on it. I think it's an interesting cover though, cause look at it. It the the, the album listing is, is put on there with stickers. Like they weren't really sure what was going to be on there, and then they they put these stickers on there. Show you, that. You that's, know, it's funny. I find weird. this happening from time to time. Is that sometimes an album? Because usually cover, Columbia, usually Columbia has their stuff together. Can sour the music before I even listen to it because yeah. I'm like, this is the dumbest well, cover. Well, the best example of that is Return to Forever, 
that night with the yeah. flowers. Yeah, when I saw that, I was like, this band is like a joke. But you're an old And then I went home and realized. Guy. You I had, don't like that? No, then I had, to, I had to realize I had to run back and get it for what it was. Yeah. That's before I knew what. Nights are kind of cool. Yeah, but not this one. It was like blue and pretty yeah. and really yeah. clean and, you um, know, it just looks stupid. But there has been, some, there's a, um, I think I picked it up. It's probably down here somewhere. Um, a um, Gil Scott Heron. And it's like a best of. But the dude at the record store was like, man, he could have did a little better job with that cover. Yeah, he's, he's wearing like white pants and squatting <laughs> down or something awkward. It's it's like he's yeah. It's, it's something with a. It's like he's having a dinner party serving nachos and you just yeah. He's yeah. It's it's really <laughs> '80s and um, effeminate. It's effeminate '80s for a Gil Scott Heron record. But it, the the record smokes, so you have to look past the cover. But you know. A few years ago, I'd have probably just no, 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 no. I went right past that cover. Sure. I I've, thinking about I've it. gone past it because of that cover. Oh, sure. I have been past that record. Who, you know, <laughs> I get compliments on the hyphen. Hey, of course an, you anything? Would. Anybody die this week or anything? We're not doing that. <laughs> It's a, it's a couple records today. Well, I'm looking over there, and I'm thinking, uh, what can we do to get to we that? Can, well, let's bust through these real quick. Okay, let's do that while we're still sane. Well, we can go in. Uh, no. I don't want to make you sit there and hold it like a damn uh, a witch woman. <laughs> uh, you ain't no damn, you ain't no bar. Thank you. You ain't no bar whore, you damn. Thank you. Very pass much. them on. It's our problem at that point. If we're going to consume them, it's my business. Um, and problem. White Stripes. So you're still playing. I ha still haven't arrived. Yeah, this is. Um, it's like every White Stripes album, red and white. Yes, they love this. Uh, this especially this one is uh, connected to this uh, Swedish artist. This one guy that uses red and white, and they the really still? fell in love with it. This guy. It's yeah. It's named after him, or it's got something to do with him. I can't remember. I've said it on another program. Go look it up. What am I here for? Um, really, really like this one. This is the second White Stripes album. And I uh, just picked it up. The last time we did the show, it was a dig of the week, so I ain't gonna spend too much time on it. But it's uh, it's good stuff. Had a, had a, some time, had a download card. I've gotten to listen to it in my phone, just jamming around, and I've listened to the record a couple of times, and it's uh, it's really some good business, man, for sure, for sure. Busted out an old um, grown man record night favorite, and I would say I made this comment on the social stream earlier that. The end crowd, the title track for this Ramsey Lewis album, is a good um, candidate to be a grown man record night theme song. Oh, Something it's, it is. Something we've been playing for the, for the is, longest time. It is so classic. Boom, 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 boom. It just kind of screams mm, Friday mm, night, mm, early mm, evening, mm, poured your mm, first drink kind of feel. Mm, yeah. It's got that kind of deal going on. And I love a good deal. Push. Football. Head up. Next record, Captain Beefheart and the Magic Band. I've not pulled this out. This is Shiny Beast, Bat Chain Puller. Uh, it's a promo copy of this record, even still. Bat Chain Puller? But what's really weird what about... Is it a compilation? No. There's a weird thing about how he and Frank Zappa was working on this together. They got into this huge beef. Probably turn that down. Is that loud? Sounds loud. Maybe that's just coming off the needle loud. Either way. Sometimes music will do that. Um, no, but, not, not the main. No, the but the uh, the big deal about this was Captain Beefheart and um, uh, Zappa, Zappa got into a big beef about around this recording session. This is one of the things that came out of it. There's a couple of things that are kind of titled similarly. So it's a big beef album. It's a big beef. I don't want to start a whole big beef here, but what a great record. That's good stuff, man. That's quality business. And it's something that we've not uh, pulled out here in quality. a long time. Quality. On, uh, Girl Man Record. I've had that a few years, but I've only busted it out a couple times. I don't think I've times. ever heard it. I decided to go... I'm going to take it home with me. No, now. I decided to go Crazy Business Silly Friday and bust out a little Between the Buried to Me. This is the first album from them, um, self-titled. And uh, if you've been a fan of the program for any time, you know, uh, the cool story behind this is the producer of this record, Jamie King, was also the producer of my band's first record um, back in the day. Although this one sounds better. Wang, Wang Chung. This one sounds better. Self-titled. 
Um, everybody went on tonight. Everybody have fun tonight. But uh, yeah, so that's a cool little connection. The next one, this record I played with a heavy heart. It took an extra person and some help to bring it all the way up to the turntable because my heart weighed so much for how much sad I am about of it. So first in the week, we lost Christopher Lee. Yeah, v Vampira. Sure, Dracula, also Dracula. The, the Vampire Hunter, also my favorite, Saruman. He was, he was effing Saruman. He did an excellent job as Saruman in Lord of the yeah. Rings. Blew my mind. But, and then I think we lost Dusty Rhodes. Not only did we lose Dusty Rhodes, who Dusty we've got a little Rhodes. bit more from coming up here in a little bit, okay. so stay tuned. The big, big, uh, big deal. Dusty Rhodes was a big deal around here, especially. Uh, the best microphone man ever for wrestling, ever. But in the, the same day, we lost Ornette Coleman. And the very last show we played the side A1 of this record, and it's a long conversation about how Ornette Coleman was, uh, I really wish I'd have listened to him back in the day. I yeah. think he would have been a better musician. We had this long, drawn-out deal about him, and then um, he died the, the, before we could even do a damn another show. So uh, I played side two tonight, obviously out of respect. And um, if you don't have any ornament, you should pick up something, something, anything. This is what I learned. Listen I, to it. I read a little something about um, Ornette Coleman this week. It said, if you're a fan of any um, weirdo avant-garde noise rock weird metal that's all out of time you owe all of that stuff you like frank zappa if you like king crimson you owe all of that to ornette coleman he's he was the first person to take um just and especially in jazz take chord patterns the whole idea of using patterns in jazz which is that's really how you play jazz sure. everything's in patterns threw it out the window all the melodic structure, and just... I brought an Ornette Coleman record. It's the only one I have. Oh, I didn't know you had and that. I wish I had... We've played it, I think, maybe once. Um, oh, I wish I had that music is the question or the answer is the question. I want the, the double quartet. I want the double quartet, but I haven't found it. I've seen this question one yeah. recently. It's a reissue. I just haven't picked it up, but I do have the Soap Suds. This is 1978. Um, we didn't play it, but I just wanted to yeah. show. We'll play it here in a bit. But what a what a bummer! But yeah. What a kick-ass musician! I, I, the only thing about Ornette Coleman that I'm really sad about, and I'll just kind of lament it again, is that I, I discovered him so late. But not that I'm going to croak next week or anything. So I got a lot of time to listen to shit. But right. 85 years old, man. That's a, you know, that's not too bad. We should all be so lucky. So um, hey, man. We appreciate all the music. and So uh, we also lost Ruby D today, I think, or yesterday. Ruby D. Ruby D. She was an uh, act. Uh, Elizabeth. She's the mother in, um, she's played a lot of roles. You've probably seen, we see you, you recognize you her. Shot? You want to do a shot? But did you see Amer American Gangster, about the guy from Greensboro that was the heroin transport? Yeah, I've not seen that. He plays, she plays his mom. Good movie. Yeah. Let's do a little for, so for Ornette all Coleman. The, Coleman. So all the friends we lost this week. Especially Ornette yeah. Coleman. Yeah. Woo! Oh, salt. Sorry, Alex. Mm, I don't like it. Mm. Wow. Kim Jong Il. What's Kim Jong Kim Jong Yoon. Kim Tae Hill. Did you have a, something to tell us about? No. I, I, I got no. I got something coming up. Okay, I'll just shut up. I got something special for Dusty Rhodes. I mean, yeah, Ornette you, Coleman. Man. We can talk about. Take me home, Dusty Rhodes. You know, with uh, Ornette Coleman, we can play his records and talk about his music. I got a little something special for Dusty Rhodes, and we got a great story coming up. Oh, good. I look forward to that. Wrestling's, about this. wrestling's big here in this area. Yeah, and in that era, it was the best. And it was when we were kids. Because sure. you know, this is. It's almost like NASCAR and wrestling. It's your list is a hub. Oh. You just, oh! You just made my nips hard. You just said wrestling and NASCAR, and I just I just want to pull my shirt off and start getting nasty up in here. I mean, we'll get slapped nasty now. 
That was that was really when I moved to this area. That's the first kind of shock to the system, is how ingrained NASCAR and wrestling, but wrestling's big yeah. in most places. Now. And both both to me are um, they're very joke. But, but here you're likely to see a famous wrestler like Ric Flair to show up somewhere. You know, I'll, I'll like, tell, hey, there's Ric Flair. You tell a Ric Flair story? Uh, well, if you got time, I'll tell a Ric Flair story, <laughs> and then uh, Jay will tell a good Dusty Rhodes story. So this gentleman that I worked with for a long time, this is back in the 80s. He was out riding his motorcycle with a friend of his. They stopped in the subway. And this is in the 80s when they had the NWA wrestling and, uh, you know, the Four Horsemen. Uh, Ric Flair shows up and, uh, and with a limo and pulls up to subway and comes in. Obviously, just got done with a match or something because his hair is, like, wet. He's fresh out of the shower. But he's got this great big old shiner, this black eye is sticking up there. And when he walks in there... My buddy's friend goes, who kicked your ass? <laughs> and they were like, oh, shit. And then Ric Flair goes, woo, I love it, baby. Everybody's sandwiches is on me. And bought everybody's uh, <laughs> meal that was in the restaurant. I love it, baby. <laughs> yeah, because it was like, woo, really? <laughs> yeah. That's crazy. That is fun. <laughs> That sounds like something Ric Flair would do. Too. That's a very, uh, that's a very Ric Flair type thing. <laughs> so anyhow, uh, where the hell? We, uh, tell me about this record, Steve. What's you were gonna, on? I want to hear Dusty Rhodes' story now. No, it's coming. You I, got I, me start. I'll it. No, I got to uh, lead it. No, that's a tease. That's a tease, that's a tease right tease. there. Tell me about this. Now. What we played? Oh, what we played? I'm, so I finally showed up and I uh, put on Blue Cheer. Uh, Vincibus Eruptum. This is their first album from 1968, recorded in '67. As Claimed by many to be, you know, the Summertime Blues is the first heavy metal yep. song. That's what we, we just talked about that it's, in the last show, I believe. It's a great sounding record, too. It's that kind of, oh, it's stereo, yeah. but it's really like that, uh, that divided mono kind of thing going on. I over. really All like kind of that. channel, then channel you, action. You found that like thrifty, right? You didn't get, you didn't pay a whole lot for that, did you? Uh, no, I didn't pay a lot for it at all. That's, that's awesome. A couple bucks. All blue cheer shit's at the top of my list. Inside, outside, or whatever. Outside, inside. Covers beat to hell and back. That's I, the vinyl's the pretty good. I'm not complaining about it. I'm real happy. In fact, I've been thinking about this record. I was afraid I left it over here. I wasn't sure I still had it. Because so, I hadn't seen it in a while. Mm -hmm. And I was like, oh, yeah, i gotta, I got to make sure I got that, you know. Yeah. I'm going to there. I've not seen that around. Thumbing through Your all copy shit. is the only copy I've ever seen. They're around. So I've not even seen them for 10, 12, 15 bucks. It's on Phillips. You know a, you know a Phillip? Who's Phillip? I don't know. What next record? Uh, let me have that. Nope. Put it away. War Galaxy. And apparently it says REM on the front. <laughs> I don't know what that means. Yeah. This is uh, this is War's Galaxy album. Came out in 77. That's the year I was born, dog. That's a great dog. album. Great war album, man. Uh, and I, I, I forget, that, I've got a couple of war albums. That's that one I've passed suspect. on before. I was like, man, I wish I'd never passed on. I've seen it in $2 places. And mm, you should totally get that. Uh, my problem is I've got a couple of war records that are uh, suspect and condition-wise. Suspect and, of a crime? Yes. And uh, it's, um, so when I go to grab it, I was like, oh, man, I'm gonna, I want to hear some war. And I'm like, shit. Which one is really shitty? And especially if we're doing the show, I don't want to just pull one. I remember that that was a good one though. Yeah, but dude, I've got a couple of them that are shitty. You, know? you mean shitty like the music, or shitty like it, no the, the quality? quality yeah, yeah, yeah. Of, you don't want to put that. Get, you don't want to put that on people. And I get that one, and a couple of the other ones I have confused, and so when I go to grab like one, like deliver the word, or it yeah. really surprised me when I put that one on. I'm like, no, this sounds straight. What's what am I talking about? And I've not played that in a long time. Next, tell me about this business. Oh, next, I, I decided I wanted to play little one-offs. Okay. Because I like doing that. It's Somebody fun. was asking for a Steve mix. Well, we try. I didn't have much to think about. It's, you know, wasn't a, I didn't have a whole lot going on in terms of a theme or anything, but I just wanted to play some stuff. So. Sure. Um, we started with some Alabama Shakes. Great stuff, man. This is man. a seven-inch that I got. To, it, I think this came, if you pre-ordered the Sound & Vision album, 2015 it came out before record store day it's, look at the vinyl it's nice uh, white vinyl white vinyl uh, Jay, what are you doing look at that but if you pre-ordered pre the album you got this i was able to get this 
without I, I'm I'm gonna buy the album. This this thing every time I listen, I'm like, why haven't I bought the album yet? That's good stuff. <laughs> and it's available. It's quite stripesy. Yeah, it's, it's got that gr that kind of Garagey. a grungy, bluesy, yeah. soulful sound. Yeah. So yeah. Uh, Jay <laughs> uh, brought this record over as part of his would be his dig of the week. Jay, I'll give you a little graphic. That no, is a dig of the week. Yeah, hey, that's not, that's well, you're not on the microphone. I can't hear anything you're saying. That's not the that's best all, one I bought. This no, no, no. But if you, if we play any during what we played, but this if week, it's something we dug, we always like to pop yeah, up the dig. Okay. Well, it, a this dig. is a dig of the week, and let me tell you why. Oh, that is a dig of the week. Yeah, sure. This is a Deep Purple and Rock. This is a later Deep Purple, right? No. It's no? Later. It's like 1970. It's the middle of the pack. Okay. 1970. The but for me, it includes... Child and Time, which is my favorite what Deep Purple What can you tell me about song. Child and Time? I can tell you that it is played in the movie Twister, although it is not <laughs> listed as anything on the soundtrack. So it's not on the soundtrack. It's not on the soundtrack. It's not included. Did you buy that. the soundtrack hoping you'd see it? You got some on your nose. What is that, Lime? Lime. It's uh, like a booger. <laughs> anyway. Um, um, but, uh, Bolero. Yeah. It's badass. There's a scene where they're widening out and a twister. So you can see, like, the whole team going down the road. And you hear, and I was like, whoa, what is that? And I, my mom wanted, really enjoyed the, um, uh, Eddie Van Halen uh, stuff that's played on there. There's actually a song called Marooned. Oh, really? That she wants played at her funeral. Okay. It's an Eddie Van Halen song. My okay. mom's not a redneck woman. This is not redneck a redneck right, woman. She's no. It's not like she's not like a convenience no, store cigarette you, woman. You bought a like Eddie Van Halen. You bought a like David Gilmore solo album. Yeah, she likes. She heard she that solo. She was like, Oh my God! I want you to. She said, will you learn to play that for my funeral? Your mom like, reminds me of Peter, Paul, and Mary. That's, I learned to that play a, a lot of guitar. I learned Peter, Paul, and Mary. She was a big fan. Well, didn't she show you some of the chords for Nirvana? Like, oh, I think that's oh, maybe an A minor. We watched Nirvana unplugged and paused mm -hmm. and fast-forwarded and rewound and, and slow mode. And she was like, that looks like an E minor. You know, and then helped me figure out Nirvana songs when I was first learning guitar. She showed me, like, the basics, but she didn't know the new stuff, you know and then helps me figure it out. But yeah, why were we talking about my mom? <laughs> what would you play? I was talking about Twister. I was talking about Twister. <laughs> me and my mom both really enjoy Twister. It's why are we great, talking about my mom? <laughs> it's a great movie. It's very corny. It's a great movie though. It is a great movie. Uh, um, all right, what's well, Steve Next. played a couple of one-offs. Yeah, I need a, a couple beer, of one-offs. Um, this is a, a, a 12 inch single. It's actually not a single. There's a couple of mixes on here. Where'd you get that? This, this is the uh, What You Need extended mix. But we played the LP cut. We played the LP cut of uh, What You Need, cool. which was the first top 10 single for In Excess in the US. It's on Listen Like Thieves. Um, Great song, man. What year was it? 83? No. I mean, it's got some 80s kind of cheese to it, but. 85. Like that's when... It, oh, but I mean, it's a great sound. It's got such a great sound, though. It's taken years for me to... Oh, sorry, I dropped my microphone. Everybody In Excess was a great band that was able to include the guitar into their electronic, you know, dance music, you know. It's taken years for me to listen to some of the 80s cheese kind of stuff, but be like, selectively pick out, like, like that song. It's like, well, yeah, I, I lived through great, it, so I'm able to help you with that. That's a great song. I lived through that. Yeah, that was on the radio, and it's on a bunch of compilations, and it, it's one of those songs, but that's a great song. Yeah. And then we played, uh, I believe, Kraftwerk. A little Tour de France. Nice. By Kraftwerk. Yeah. You got that at Reanimator? I think I was with you. Ah, when, when we saw Bob Log. Ah, that's when you bought it. Ah, it was 15. 1983. Tour de France. Yeah, this song actually, I don't think, showed up on an album. It was, they had planned to use it in something that fell apart. I forget what it was, but craft work. I think you bought that the same day that I bought the Soft Machine Five. And I bought I bought this Bob because Wild. I plan on on passing the music along to my son. 
Yeah. He'd, he'd sent me a list of some records to buy him. Because I said, S tell me some records that you, you're interested in. Because I, I got him interested in vinyl. And he sent me a list, and some of them I just can't get down with. I'm sorry. <sighs> Is that wrong? No, he's down with, um, he's into... Uh, I'll tell you one thing I got him that's on his list. He's, in, he's into like he's house... Into House music, and dubstep. And that's cool, but it's that's like mixed up stuff they they put on vinyl. It's like why not get into mixing it up? And he's into mixing it up. You yeah. know, don't get me wrong, but he did mention um, this is a, a a soundtrack to a horror movie called It It Follows. I bet Elizabeth knows this um, the soundtrack, and it's it's by a guy uh, called Disaster Piece, and this is actually very very good. Um, so I got him this, and I'm not going to open it because it's not for me, but uh, very, very excellent soundtrack. Really? So oh, you yeah. listen to it? I've listened to it on YouTube. Huh. Um, cool. Yeah, I like uh, horror soundtracks are usually the best. This is really good. It's electronic, um, and I decided I wanted to get him a Kraftwerk album. Yeah. So I, I have to thank my friend John Tambroni. And if you ever have a question, you know, you can always go to the VC. Sure. But if you know somebody in the VC who's really really into something and, and kraut rock my friend john is is absolutely a go-to guy kraut rock and so i said resort. hey what do you think uh a good uh craft work? what's your favorite what's the best craft work album and i got i got a messenger reply that i'm still reading it's it's excellent i'm saving it so i can really because he, he breaks down all the records and depends on what you're into and it's like and I, you know finally i said look he's, he's into house music like dead mouse and stuff like that and so he gave me some suggestions, so cool. I'm gonna include hey, man, that. That's what it's all about. It is what it's all about. That's really cool. But we finished it up with um, this is a dig, one of my digs. Oh. I was eagerly, eagerly awaiting. That's just out, um, right? Yeah, I don't know if it's even out yet. I got, I got this right off the bus. Um, wow. From Underdog, Air has released all their albums. I think, well, not all their albums, but most of their albums on vinyl re-released um, and I picked up two and I wanted to play one this kind of brought the set down because this is to me this is the air album that's so like mellow like you yeah. really puts you in a certain kind of laid-back mood uh, this is the, the, the this is a soundtrack cut to the version suicides which uh, it's a movie yeah. that was directed by Sofia uh, Coppola her first yeah. movie it's got Kirsten that, Dunst in it. Was that out of Wilmington, actually? Maybe, maybe. Because uh, the I haven't was... seen the movie, to be honest with you. But this this was um, probably the first thing I ever heard by Air. Some a friend of mine once said, "I was you know heavily into Pink Floyd. He's like if you like Pink Floyd, I want you to listen to two other bands." This is before I knew Radiohead existed. Uh -huh. Listen to Radiohead and Air, and I'd heard of Radiohead, but I hadn't heard of Air. And mm. I started listening to Air, and this is the first thing I heard. And it just just hooked me because it's got this has got such a the keyboards sound very Floydian, Floydian I have to say. Yeah. Okay. So I, I'm not familiar with that, but I would I would be down to check that out. You know. Okay. You know, I wouldn't be opposed to it. Hey, that's that's all of what we played. But uh, I tell you, let's just slide on in since we mentioned a couple of things uh, for dig of the week. We should just slide on in and do a little more dig of the week action. I actually uh, since. We, uh, we, we've been away a couple of weeks. I'm going to do, um, I did, I really went back to, uh, for this dig of the week, I have to say, I really went back to the uh, roots of really rooting around and digging the crates. I've, um, I went with um, uh, one of our digging spots that we like to go to that mm -hmm. I, I visit when I can, but it's been a little while. I've been going to more record stores. Um, I went to this one and, um, I was really happy to be back in a two dollar. Everything's two dollars. I don't know what's where. Digging like, oh shit! Look what I found. And I, everything's two bucks there. I grabbed five from there. Went to a new digging spot uh, down the road that Jay kind of hit me to. Everything was a buck, and Dang. I picked up ten more records. Dang, dude! But I'm not gonna do fifteen tonight. I, I'm gonna choose seven or eight to do tonight. And uh, I'll do the next uh, next chunk next week. I'm gonna try to uh, for the new digging spot. I'm trying to uh, save that you for next week. You want to bury everybody? In. No, 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 no. I don't. It's a, we're already up to damn almost 40 minutes. So we're gonna kick it on along for this dig of the week. You got some stuff for dig of the week? I got a, uh, I got just a few things. To be honest with you. Okay, pull some stuff out. I'm. A, I, I still need a minute to. 
Well, I organize um, some of my stuff here. I don't know nobody. Well, I was. You ever known anybody, Steve? I've known one or two people. Yeah. I got three records. I'm glad I know Jay. I got three records. Oh, okay, now. I'll just go ahead and finish off the air conversation. Um, the one record I think that John uh, Jonathan at Underdog agrees with me because right. he, he also added this to his collection was um, the Air 10,000 Hertz Legend album. And it's a double album. Um, it's incredible. It's, it's a little more uh, uh, electronic dance type uh, in that genre. Um, one of the guys in the band, he was, he was actually, before it was two guys, it was one guy. It's Nicholas Godin and Jean Benoit Dunkel, I think. Okay. <laughs> I'm probably saying that totally wrong. But Nicholas Godin initially recorded a demo with Funkadelic as members of Funkadelic. What is this again? Air. Of the Air, right. The French right. band. Sorry. The French band. Away for a second. Uh, Virgin Suicides was from 2000, 2000. That was their second album. And this is from 2001. Hmm. And many feel this is their, one of their best albums. So I was really happy to pick it up. I haven't opened it yet. I don't know if it's colored vinyl. Or you know, what I remember about Air is... Um, what do you know about Air? For Mother's Day or something uh, in like 2004 or five. You burned me a copy of Air to give to my mom. Oh, really? Yep. Because I knew, I, she like, liked, I knew she liked Floyd. Yep. I was like, she really likes Pink Floyd. And you were like, oh, no, no, I got some stuff. And you just burned me a copy and I gave it to her. And she was like, oh, yeah, I really like that. Did she like it? Yeah. Okay. She put it on her iPod. She's like 70 for the record, folks. She's not 70. Mm -hmm. Is she? Her mom is? What's in here? I don't know. Near. So, yeah, what do you got? I'm pulling stuff well, that doesn't belong. I, I pulled up into one of my two dollar spots, and I went on, uh, and I went on down here, as George Thurgood would say. Picked up a little. Uh, look at this. this. is an original shrink. I just noticed this. James Gang Thirds. This is the last record with, um, with Joe Walsh. The look last Joe Walsh. Original shrink. It says uh, four ninety seven or something on that. I don't know if that's original press. I don't know what that is. Third study album by uh, James Gang, released in 71 on ABC. Last one with Joe Walsh. Uh, Walk Away was released as a single, making the top four. Oh, and, yeah. Uh, on at least one national chart, reaching uh, number mm, 51. On the liner notes, mm, uh, the LP version of the 71 album, Joe Walsh is credited Taking in, my time. with guitar, vocals, my and train mind. wreck. The latter for his work on the song Walk Away. The third element was a raw commentary on the multi-track cascading lead guitars that clash as the song fades out. So that's what, they're, mm -hmm. what that comes from. Great uh, song. Yeah. And uh, I've not seen that around, so I'm really glad to pick that up. Check this out. I picked up um, some Bebop Deluxe. Dude, this is Drastic Plaques that... Plastic, and it's got a great back cover, 78 on EMI. Uh, I've picked up some Bebop's Deluxe. Also, John, speaking of John, sent us some Bebop's Deluxe, uh, and uh, that's all, shit's always on, uh, is that on Harvest, or is that one not on Harvest? Yeah, uh, yeah. It is, it is, it is. Pull it out. It's got the old green, like, Pink Floyd Harvest label. Yes. Look at there now. Um, the Pink Floyd Green Harvest, that's fine. Yeah, you know. Oh, yeah. You know. You know. You know. You know. You know. It's the last album of you art know. rock based you know. Bebop Deluxe, released in 78, recorded in Chateau St. George, Juan Les Pines in the south of France in the summer of 77. Another the France. The year I was born. Another, fr another French band? I don't know. Are we doing French, French bands France? tonight? Uh, the material is different from the previous album, showing changes in the musical direction of the band. Their style, although maintained some of their progressive uh, and glam standards, was more synth pop and new wave oriented. I'm thinking Talking Heads ish. A little more Talking Heads. You heard it? In. I have not. You have not so listened. We'll see about it. This is, um, you know, I'm actually going to look this up right now. Do one, Steve. I'll do while one. I'm doing this. Uh, I picked up a couple more records. Uh, one for three bucks, one for a buck. I got a Klaatu record here. Oh, wow. It's their second album called Sir Army Sweet. Okay, I've not seen that one around in the wild. 78, if I'm not mistaken. Huh. It's their second record. You listened to it yet? I have not. Is it disco? I have not listened to it. I bet it, I hope it's not. I don't know what to think about it. 
It shouldn't be this guy. I hope it won't let me down. I really like Klaatu. I don't, they, they didn't last long, but I like what I what I like. You know, yeah, I, I liked it. Yeah, that for a buck though. I had one of these. This is a double album. I had mm. one of them, but I didn't have the cover. I just had the record. I was able to pick this up for a Ooh. buck, and it's got it's got a, a mark all the way through one side. A mark strand on side A, but I I can hardly hear it. I don't know. And for a buck, it's it's well worth diving wow. in. This is 1999 by Prince. Uh, this was one of the soundtracks of my college days, but this is big up to Karsten. This is 1982. Denmark. He's a big Prince guy. Karsten in Denmark. Great record. One of my favorite Prince albums. Yeah. Uh, just it's good. I picked it's that good up. Uh, I got that on cassette recently. Okay. A little shout out to the cassette community. I really want to start collecting more toys. I just wish I had more room to do that. You can always knock a wall down. I've got some good toys. I just don't. I don't have room to put them up. I mean, we got the Voltron and the Castle yeah. Grayskull is at my feet. You got down the here. Snoopy ice ice cone maker. I mean, I literally have Snow Castle Grayskull at my feet. No, you're gonna break something. You pull it's that Castle out. It's Castle Grayskull. You're gonna break something. Oh, I literally have that at my feet. So that's really all I have to show tonight. But I was really happy to bring. What I did to the program tonight. That's a good. That's a good stab at the program now. I stabbed it well. Um, I also picked up for two bucks. All these records are for two bucks or less. Uh, Japan Ten Drum. Man, look at this sucker. Eighty one on. So Virgin. this is uh, this is your man. Uh, oh, what's his name? Scotty Strickman in uh, from DC sent us that Japan record, and uh, I wasn't really. Oh, it's David Sylvie. David Sylvie. I really wasn't too hip to him uh, who, uh, until he sent that record, and I was like, "Holy shit!" Who Robert Fripp tried to, you know, bring into the whole King Crimson I thing, said, and I think that David said, "No, thank you." That one that he sent us, I was like, "This may be the best '80s pop sounding record I've ever heard." It's a great record. Uh, I put it up there with uh, that Japan, Japan record. Japan has a strong uh, following of you know, of this you know core oh, yeah. core people unit. that really know. I mean, I would in terms of '80s records, I would put that Japan that I've gotten uh, from Scotty. I would put it up there with Thriller and um, Whoa, Invisible Touch. Okay, which are two major '80s pop things yeah. for me and a lot sure. of people. Sure, but this oh, this one. What a problem. How long have we been off the air? The last comment was 1224. That was 10 months ago. How long have we Why been off the air? Why don't you say something about Randy Rhodes or Dusty Rhodes? Did, did anybody hear me whistle patience? No, probably not. It's not a bad thing, though. You did well, but nobody really needs to hear it. One guy wanted to put me on his uh, album. He's like, he's a producer. He's going to be whistling in the bathroom. And he was like, dude, dude you, you're a good whistler. You want to come whistle on an album? And I was like, I got a part. Where well, you, like you a, were in the bathroom whistling? And I'm like, yeah, I'm going to I could whistle. And he's like, yeah, here, look, call me. And, we'll, and I'm like, oh, call you. And it, was, yeah, it, been the news, like, it could have been the next Patience guy. How long were we off the air? I'm only going to ask this one more time. Nobody's going to be able to tell you. you. You put it in there. You type it in there. Type the words that go along with the answer to that question. Everybody, everybody's watching. They're all, they're all a bunch of motherfuckers. They're all motherfuckers. <laughs> and I want some of these motherfuckers to type on it. I got one more record I'm going to talk about for Dig of the Week this week. Um, and I'll tell you what. I was really proud to pick this up. It's the first time I've... Uh, ever picked up one of these out in the wild and it was so good to get back out into the wild felonious monk crisscross now we have a certain formula obviously you would pick this up if you're in your right mind anyhow for two bucks but there's a certain formula for grown man record night releases if you're not too sure i wish i could do a quiz contest can anybody tell me what it is but look on the back of here well is it, is look that, at the picture on the I know back. the labels are nice if it's blue note or verve. Sure, but look at the picture on the back. But usually if you look now on the front, you never normally don't see it. Sometimes you'll see it. The guy yeah. eating a sandwich or something but in his crotch or whatever. But 
The back picture, yeah, it says a lot. It's an African-American gentleman smoking a cigarette in black and white. That is the grown man record night guarantee. We haven't revealed, Let me just put this revealed out there. who this is. I'll just put this out there, folks. Uh, Thelonious if, Monk. If you buy a uh, record based on the grown man record night formula as there is a, an African-American gentleman smoking a cigarette in a black and white photo on a record, you take that record home and it sounds bad. You don't enjoy it. You don't want to own it. You send that to me, I will reimburse you for the record. No questions asked. You heard it here. Absolutely. That's the Grown Man Record Night guarantee. <laughs> Did I say that? Really? African American gentleman, black and white picture, smoking a cigarette. You don't like the record? I'll buy it from you. Point blank. Point Mel blank. This is uh, Thelonious Monk's first time I found him in the wall. This is his 26th album. Dang. You remember that? I mean, I mean, you believe that? Man, do you remember that? You remember it? I remember That's it. That's only his second one. Called with Criss Cross. With Columbia. Second album for Columbia. Uh, Thelonious is at his greatest. Consists of previously uh, released Monk compositions that were re-recorded and released. A lot of people don't care for this particular area, uh, area of Monk. Because he's um, the one thing he the, started getting crazy. It's Bats not crazy. easy about Criss Cross is to keep your foot from tapping. This is kind of when he started going off the deep end, That's what it says. and it kind of stopped. Uh, he wasn't writing uh, his own compositions much anymore. He tended to be more reworking older shit at this point. But still, a two dollar Thelonious Monk shit out in the wild. I'm probably not going to pass it up. I've not even played it. It may sound like horse shit. It didn't look too bad, but I'm still not going to leave it in there for two bucks. Okay. First label is it? Columbia. Columbia. Is it a six eye? I think it's a one six eye. It's a one eye. No, two eye. Two eye Columbia. All right, two eye. Everybody. One on each down. side. One on each side, everybody. That's a cool two dollar find. That's a great two dollar. <laughs> Fine. It's fantastic. So, uh, Jay, I'm going to have you tell us your uh, uh, Dusty Road story, because we're getting ready to do some cool Dusty Road shit here for just a moment. moment. Kind of talking like a retard. Well, let me here. tell you something, Tony Schiavone. No, this doesn't, this this is nowhere near as good as your Ric Flair story. We'll preface you it You don't think that. so? No, no. This is just kind of a, a young kid uh, living his dream. So imagine a young Kerbist in Greensboro Coliseum in 1985. That camera's hot, Steve. I know. All right. Uh, the record's over. My cousin used to take us to all these NWA matches back when it was huge. I mean, freaking huge. And it was myself and my cousin. Yeah. Who you, we were in the same band with. Yeah. And, oh, okay. And we'd go, the, probably every two weeks they'd come to Greensboro. And you could get front row seats for like eight bucks back then. And so we were at one of the shows, and uh, Dusty Rhodes was fighting. I think it was Ric Flair or somebody, like the main event match. And it was one of those like 30 minute bloodbath matches, you know? Yeah. And me and my cousin stood by the rail when they left the ring. Dusty Rhodes is covered in blood. He reaches oh, out, God. gives us gives us five as he's walking back to the dress what? room. We get blood on our hands. No, he didn't. And we don't wash them for like three days. We think it's the freaking coolest thing ever. We had Dusty Rhodes blood on our hands. No way. Yeah, no, that's the, that's the truth. I remember we went to church the next morning with blood on our hands. It was you pretty went, cool. You went to church yeah. with Dusty Rhodes blood on your hands. Yeah. And then after you did what after that? Ask for forgiveness. You asked for forgiveness. Yeah. But anyway, that, that's, that was my brush with Dusty Jesus. Rhodes. That's the Jay Dusty Rhodes story. What else you got to tell us while you're standing up there, Jay? Pull it up in your mouth now. Put it up in your mouth. Say. say something about What's it. coming up in Curb, curb Talk? Uh, we're working on a good Curb Talk for next week. We got some good <laughs> stuff coming. Um, you got some new studio equipment, Jay. Mm, no, I didn't. Who told you that? That's another deep taste. Yeah, we'll talk about that another day. I'm, I am getting something this week, actually, that's really, really, really nice. All right, for all your long distance needs, 10-10-220. Speaking of Dusty Roads, folks, 
uh, I can only just play my very favorite Dusty Rhodes clip ever. So uh, stay tuned with us here on Girl Man Record Night. Always use 10, 10, 220. We'll be right back with a uh, So To Speak and Chip Chat. Ladies and gentlemen, the world television champion, the American dream, Dusty Rhodes. Dusty, welcome. But what about Jimmy Vay? What, what, he tried it. They almost got him again. This has got to stop somewhere. Let me tell you something, David Crockett. This is going to cease to exist. It's going to stop now. I don't play no game. And I don't take no prisoners. Vegas Wall is going to have a lot of help. And tell the black that you come out here and you talk about baby died, pa driving that boy, putting that boy out of wrestling, talking about boy this and boy that. Well, David, you know my youngest, Till Margaret, is two and a half years old. And I tell her a story about the cold-blooded sausage maker that's walking through the woods. And these little pigs run around. And he grabs the little pigs and he making cold-blooded sausage out of them. But always in that story, when she's scared and her eyes are big as silver dollars, the American dream comes and saves the little piggies. But in this case, I am the cold-blooded sausage maker. Tully Blanchard, and you the little piggies, and you running around with one big pig. That's right. Now I hope my mama don't call David and get on for me talking this way. But she ain't no lady. She ain't no 10. She's nothing more than something off the... I ain't even gonna talk about it. And you talking about now, you gotta deal with a dealer. That's fine. Cause that's risky business. I am risky business. I am the cool, bloody sausage maker. Here's Wet Banana. You can dash and splash on Wet Banana like Billy. You can dip and flip like Ricky. Slippery wet fun for the whole game. Could that be Mom on Wet Banana? It is! Regular Wet Banana, 25 feet long. And the new Wet Banana Super Slide, 30 feet long. Each sold separately. Wet Banana Super Slide comes with 30-foot slide, banana sprinkler, and fasting hook. From Cokie. Problem, Paige. I've got problem perspiration. The hotter it gets, the wetter I get. I spend all summer bathing in perspiration. Dear Dripping Wet, take my advice and use Mitchum. It's one product specially made for problem perspiration. You'll be surprised how effective it is. Dear Problem Page, Mitchum's changed my life. I can't believe it. I'm a new person. Mitchum for problem perspiration. Okay. Right. <laughs> <laughs> okay play, play that record I got on the disc on the that wreck I got on the thing there. How do you know what level it's at? I don't. Oh no. Whatever the last record was. Oh no. I know. Everything's gonna be Everything's upside down. Okay, let's do a so to speak. Okay. Um if you say so. How's the show doing so far? How much time are we in? We're we're good. We're good because we're good because of Sesso. We're good because, oh my gosh. Oh. I need a bottle opener or it's going to rip open my hand about it. Oh. Oh, there you go. There's your bottle Did opener, you motherfucker. 51-year-old 50, man. Ow. There's your bottle opener. What do we got here? I, I told Jay to put one in the, uh, oh, this is a sarsaparilla. Sarsaparilla. Cuts town sarsaparilla. I like a sarsaparilla. Original, uh, what's that say? I can't read their old English writing. What does that say? We got the Cuts Town. What? See? Nick's Besser? I knew a guy that had his last name, uh, Old English, tattooed across <laughs> his abdomen. And this one girl was like, does it say fucker across the top of you? He's like, no, Vickery. That's my last it's name. It's Sars Sarsaparilla. Sarsaparilla. Not Sarsaparilla. Sarsaparilla. So it's got Sars in it? Sarsaparilla. Okay. What's that mean? Ward off your thirst with an ice-cold mug of Cutstown Sarsaparilla. 
Okay. Always a sign of good luck and good taste anytime. I'll be the judge of that. Ach, now, don't you drink good? Don't that drink good? That's what it says. It says, Ach, now, don't that drink good? Sie haben ein großen Beverage. That's the Okay. Right. So, sarsis, is that like a root beer kind of thing? Sarsaparilla would be. Or Drunk Dr. Pepper. That's like a root beer, Dr. Pepper kind of mix, I would say. It's good. Very root beer like. You want to try this, Jay? Sure. That's very good. You want to try some sarsaparilla? It's thick. It's good. Yeah. It's heavy. It's a root beer. That's a good Maybe that's where root beer got its origins, is sar sarsaparilla. I've been told by a friend of the program. And they're probably like, yeah, it's fucking sarsaparilla, fucker. That's how, that's the way they spell it. I've been told by a friend of the program that there's a uh, there's a root beer out there that's an alcoholic root beer. Alcoholic root beer. Dave, you don't tell me. Uh, alcoholic uh, root beer. It tastes like a root beer, but it's got a bunch of alcohol Have in it. Have we tried that one? He's, he said he's going to get me a case. Well, if you just drank alcohol and then drank your root beer like we're doing right now. I used to do rum and root beer. I bought some rum this week because we. I, I, I can't drink rum anymore. Last week I, I went to a mud run on Saturday. Mud run. And I came Is home. Is that code for a bathroom business? No, it's a mud run. <laughs> Marine mud run. Anyway, uh, Marine. To, to run. give everybody energy and make them not like uh, have their period on. Have their muscles go contract. Whatever you call that. Have, period. No. <laughs> no they period. Had, they had cases and cases of bananas. I brought home like a whole case of bananas. Remind me to tell you. And so I, I, on Saturday, I became Banana Man because I was delivering bananas to all my friends. And I even went to the liquor store. I picked up some rum. She's like, "What are you picking up this rum for?" And I got triple sack. And I was like, "Well, I'm making banana daiquiris tonight." Oh, okay. And I was like, "You want some bananas?" She's like, "Oh, well, I want some bananas." <laughs> So, no, I, went, so I went and got some more bananas. No, and I brought banana. her some of the bananas. The lady at the liquor store I gave her some bananas. Really? Yeah. The, I mean, you laid the, the pipe the banana, to her. No, the banana daiquiris were incredible, by the but way. But you laid some pipe to her. No, no, I just gave no. her bananas. Yeah. A bunch of That's bananas. That's what I'm saying. Yeah. 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 That's what I'm saying. Um, sexually transmitted disease. I think we're talking about sodas. Somehow we got on bananas. Yeah. <laughs> Bananas. Bananas. Let's do, let's do a chip chat. You got that open bag? Where'd they go? Uh, I don't know. Where'd that open bag go, Jay? Finn ran off of it. Is there not two up there? There's another one like it right here. Where's that other one? Oh, Finn finished them off. Killed them? Yeah. Here, we got, we got the bag right here. You want this one? It's not finished off. Yeah, they're finished off. Oh, there's another thing. It's up there in the bag. Chip bowl. Yeah, a chip bowl. You want to do these or you want to do something else? Huh? Uh, pick one. I think we may have done these, actually. I don't. Uh, no, we haven't. No? I, I looked it up. Oh, really? Yeah. Well, we can do them again. Pull the other one. Let's do want. this one and this one. So, open bag special becomes closed bag, open bag. Closed bag, open bag. Wait, this bag got killed. This is Flavor Mill. This is like a convenient, cheap convenience store brand. Is it a Pennsylvania company? I'm just curious. Nottingham, Pennsylvania. It's a the flavor mill. You want to donate some money to this show? Look, you think in, you know what I'm talking about? In care of Heart Hair Foods. Have we done? We done? No, that's Car. No. Car. Hair. Care. Her. Her. This, this is her. Hers. This is her. Okay. It's a it's a brand of her, I guess. They may have bought it. Whatever. Anyway. All right. We got jalapeno poppers, cheese flavored curls. It's my favorite food in the entire world. Well, jalapeno, poppers? jalapeno poppers. I will tell you, I'm not a fan of of, of these. They, this the call, puffs. They, they're calling these curls. These are puffs. They're puffs. Curls, as I know it, are the Frito Lay curls, and these are not curls. These are definitely puffs. Yeah, that's a different animal. Get you, get you some. We'll show it on the show. Okay. Here, Jay. You show that. Mm. Flavor Mill, not bad. We had these earlier. That's why we call them. I'm a fan. Them, that's why we call it OBS. I'm a big fan of these. I'm glad you like them. To me, it's like eating that hard, that foam that. Styrofoam peanuts. The, no, 
It looks like a styrofoam peanut, but styrofoam peanuts are soft. Yeah. It's got the texture of the hard plastic where, like, say you bought a gun. It would be, it would oh, be in yeah. this hard plastic. I got you. That's the texture of it. With the flavor of a jalapeno popper. Definitely. I like the flavor. I don't like the texture. I used to tell you, you know that stuff you stick, uh, not the clay stuff, but the other stuff you stick um, flowers in, like fake flowers, and it feels like styrofoam, but it's kind of bendy? You can, you can put your fingers in and go... It gives me a certain feeling. I, a, I can pick up that and go, uh-huh. I still do that. Okay. It makes me feel a certain way for some reason. That well, certain texture. Let's do a chip. Okay, do a chip then. A long time ago, I went to the Salvation Army and bought a, a bed. Okay. It's a so great way to start a story. It was a new bed. It was like they donated. This is the land of furniture, by the way, High Point, North Carolina. They donated a bunch of beds to the Salvation Army, and they sell them new. Nice bed. I love the bed. Anyway, they also had these chips for sale. They were, they're called Boulder Canyon. And I, I brought a couple bags to the show. Well, I was in a convenience store recently and found these Boulder Canyon chips. Really? This is a different flavor, though. So you saw these in the Salvation Army, though? <laughs> Not these. But originally, originally, it's a very clean chip. Didn't have a lot of crazy stuff going on. Very, not a bunch of ingredients. Which I remember, cameraman was a big fan of. Yeah. <coughs> yes, I agree. I'm looking for ingredients here. The, the words are really small. So ingre Oh, here's but the ingredients. You can read a Look, large. Here's the ingredients box that for all the ingredients. Wow. That's the box. The ingredients are potatoes. Avocado oil and sea salt. Wow. That's it. Okay. This is uh, their avocado oil canyon cut sea salt chip. It's, uh, yeah. It says live better, eat bolder. So, Colorado. Hi. All right. Boulder Canyon. Where are these from? Who knows? They want me, you think they're from Colorado. They're from Omaha, Nebraska. Okay. And get a good one. Jay? That's a clean. That's a clean chip. Yeah? It's very oily. That's avocado oil. Never had avocado oh, oil. Good for your hair. It's clean and greasy. Clean and greasy. Not very salty. No. But you can see through the chip. Look how wow. greasy, look how greasy it is. That's avocado taste. Avocado. It doesn't really taste like avocado. It's like a pair of taste I like it. Yeah, I do too. Good dip chip. Good dip chip. Got it's a lot a, of uh, sturdiness to it. It's a firm chip. Very firm chip, uh, pretty thick, and it's got a unique flavor. It tastes a little like a bookshelf. A little like a bookshelf. Hmm. Not too bad, though. Yeah. I'm not opposed to that. Good chip chap. All right. Good to be back, folks. Jesus Christ. Thanks for joining us on Grown Man Record Night. Be sure to ch uh, check out our uh, YouTube page. Also, check out our Facebook page. We'll say things there from time to time. we got some cool stuff coming in the next few weeks, so be sure to keep up with us here on our uh, live Ustream channel uh, that we do every Friday night. Uh, I don't know keep... if I'm going to be here next week. No, you're going to be here. Uh, Leaving for Colorado that Sunday. No, Colorado. you make you making all that up. Going to Colorado, hoping to find, hoping to hit a, a, a digging spot with an aching in your heart. I know there's some good places in Denver. Call up Zach. Uh, Zach Coiner. Zach Coiner. Zach Coiner's the man to go to for that. Yeah, for sure. I'm not going to call him. Yeah. <laughs> hey. Make a phone. one ringy dingy. Tell him if um. Tell him it's important. What? Tell them it's important. <laughs> Every Friday, also check out our Pick Facebook up, it's page. Important. Also check out our Facebook page. So glad to be back this week. Um, where'd you go? On call, and I don't like it. Oh, we were—we didn't do a show last week. We didn't do a show last week. I what was like I it. thinking? I didn't like it. But I got a few more records to show. We're going to talk about it but next you week. Had a, you had a special guest though. On a new digging spot. What? Who? 
Cameraman dropped cameraman by dropped last by. week. We weren't doing a show, but cameraman show, was but here. Cameraman was still here. We still hung around and did some crazy business. I but, wish I uh, could have seen him. He'll be back directly. So keep up with us. For Jay, Steve Fever, I'm Mikey Bananas. We'll catch you next time. Joe Go on that record night. We we'll appreciate the hell out of each and every one of you, especially people Joe that check up on us, man. People that miss this shit Eddie when it's gone for a week, in man. Concert. Uh, some mugs be. There's uh, a meeting here tonight. They don't like this shit when it's gone for a week. Some of these people just actually have have a reaction well, to it. So uh, hey, I appreciate we appreciate that. all those guys, especially that. those, and we'll see you next time. Grown man, record night. You bunch of effing savages. Do so, one more uh, shot for me tonight. All right, let's pour it up. Pouring a shot. Thanks for joining us, Grown Man Record Night.